Alright, another part. Um, so anyway, yeah, we have trauma in this lifetime, of course, you know, almost every single person has trauma in this lifetime. I'm trying to dig into it, to to unearth it, to bring it to the surface so that we can look at it. But it goes much further, it goes into other lifetimes and we bring baggage with us from other lifetimes into this lifetime. It is an energetic vibration, energetic frequency. And so with this energetic frequency that we carry with us, things get recreated without us knowing, without us doing anything about it. We are infants, we are babies, we were in the womb, we were a toddler. So, we but we carry this energetic vibration with us from the other lifetime, so we attract certain things. Because everything is about cause and effect, and about about vibrations that go together, you know, that vibrate together. So if, if we have a, a specific energetic vibration in us, it will attract a specific situation. Okay, So that alone does that, recreates something and causes something, causes a compounded pain which makes things much worse, of course. But that's the course of cause and effect and law of attraction. That's how it, that's how it merges, you know. So it's the same with physics, it's the same with chemistry. You know, if you look in deep into chemistry, I used to not be interested in it. I'm, I'm just now starting to look into it because I'm interested in natural holistic healing. I started to learn more about mineral compositions, about their molecular structures, and it's very eye-opening, and everything is really simplistic. It's complex, but it's also, if you look and if you study it, you see the simplicity of it. You see that everything is built upon logic. Okay, So if you look into the molecular structure of things, then you see the physics also behind that chemistry itself. Chemistry and physics are interwoven, of course, and you see you see that things are built on magnetism and electricity. Well, electricity is in itself a form of magnetism. Gravity is a form of magnetism. Okay. Polarizations between planetary powers, okay, it's a form of magnet. There's a cohesiveness of, a, of the whole, the whole planet is a cohesive mass that that has enormous amounts of gravity, magnetism, and electricity going through it at all times, or this stuff would not be staying together. Okay, So it's all very interesting. It goes all the way into subatomic particle physics. And all of this of course, you know, why would that stop anywhere? You know, it keeps going. It's just very, very, very fascinating. And we carry energies in us. And if there's an unresolved issue, then we carry that with us wherever wherever we go as a, as a, as an entity. You know, if we leave this body, we're still an entity. Okay. And we and all of that stuff, that subatomic stuff, the vibration. It's a vibration, it's a wave, but the wave consists of subatomic particles. And that's when 
material merges into ether. You know, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky talked about this. Rudolf Steiner talked about this. So it's very interesting. You know, they talked about this long before the scientists caught on. Long before, two hundred years before, they talked about this already. They have studied the ancient scriptures in India, and there have been people a long time ago already that had insights into stuff like this. But it was diffused. It wasn't. It was not concrete. It it wasn't. They weren't able to really put the finger on it, like as you can do it better with science, you know, it's because the science wasn't there for it, to back that up, to explain that in some more concrete way, and concrete, you know, I don't even want to use that word, because it's, it's just the language, it's just, you know, we, our language shows how elusive all of these things are, they elude our language. So the language is is a almost vulgarly crude and incapable of explaining these kind of things and grasping these kind of things in their in their depths and in their sensitive existence and interconnectedness so very difficult to under to understand and to explain all of these things with words you know so but obviously you know matter and what is matter like this here for example you know it consists of molecules Molecules consist of atoms. Atoms consist of subatomic particles. At some some point, it's not matter anymore. So it just happens to be matter right now in this cohesive blob. Okay. So, but there's really, in a in a real sense, there is no matter. There is no concreteness in that. Even concrete is not concrete. Yeah. So even concrete contains fluidity and movement of matter. A rock even contains some kind of movement of matter, some kind of movement, some subatomic movement. You know, A thought can actually... A thought is is a wave consisting of subatomic ether material. So that can go in. That's you know like small enough in its in its structure. It goes into a, into a rock. You know it attaches itself into the structure and ener energy vibrations that can go into a rock and attach themselves into the structure. So, but in the same sense, you know, well, it doesn't do any any harm to it, but it can, it's, it can linger there. It can sort of, you know, yeah, stick to it. Um, but in the same sense, we can also you know, whatever energetic vibration it is, if, if it's something that that is pain, then a very highly sensitive person and a very intuitive person, an empath, a, a psychic, can pick up on that, can read it, read that pattern, and, s and see, oh, this item here, or this house that I go into, you know, or the the house in Massachusetts, I think, the Borden house. I don't know if you're familiar with that. 
you know, people go into it. I know that um, that Chloe Sevigny is psychic. I know for sure. You know, she I I watched her interviews a lot, and she knew she could sense it right away. That the that this energetic pattern is still imprinted in in this house, and I have the feeling that their work there was m by recreating this, this situation by by playing these scenes was actually energetic healing work for the entities that may be at still attached in that house but not just the entities but their energetic vibration was still attached in that house and those kind of things can actually make it heal so make a house heal a whole house can suffer from negative energy so that can be healed you know it's not something like oh now we need to be avoiding that house for forever and on halloween we don't go there and no no someone needs to go in there someone with a good heart you know, and say hey we can heal this in the same sense it goes for the psychology of a human or an animal right here in this lifetime you know, we can heal this kind of stuff i'll make another part because this is just so so complex all of this i don't know i don't know if people can follow me with what i'm talking about here you know but it goes that deep you know this is not some kind of joke or laughing matter you know psychology and energetic vibrations a troll who wants to laugh everything off you know a troll is also usually usually on a substance where everything feels like a joke a drug or take that drug away and it doesn't feel like a joke anymore yeah. so you know the drug is a lie it's an escape mechanism that isn't going anywhere it's just going it it literally is going to hell during this lifetime that's what drugs do so it's like it's not an option at all you know. any kind of substance escaping with this, any kind of mind altering substance is just not going anywhere okay it's a complete it's it's the other direction of healing no. it's not an option at all the only way we can go through this healing process is if we are completely sober and that's the only that's the only way we can do it. There is no other way around it. There are holistic healing modalities. There are things that will make it easier for the for this work, you know. There are, you know, you can't also it's hard to plunge from hot to cold. Of course, you know, you have to be easy on yourselves and I'm not judging from a wider angle so I know where everyone is it's it's an unfortunate situation but you know if we if we make the effort if every single one of us makes the effort of looking into holistic healing it starts with herbs it starts with what this planet is offering us Rhododendron, Camellia japonica, Pieris japonica. These two are from Japan, that's why they're called japonica. Those are highly medicinal plants, highly medicinal and healing. Ivy, very, very healing. It takes care of your entire immune system. It gets rid of the molds. Most bodies are full of molds, so I'll make another part. 